Karen Angelo at Open America. Yes, I'm calling to remind you of the terrific work we're doing to make our government more accountable to ordinary citizens like you and me. Yes, we're looking for contributions. You gave it the office, but I'm calling you at the office. <laughs> well, same to you, buddy. How you doing? Oh, let's see. O'Malley, Lopez, Chang, and Goldberg. I'm getting non-sectarian rejection. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to watch Dialing for Dollars again. No, we want money. You send your old clothes to the Salvation Army. At Open America, we wear our old clothes. Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bush. If it's bad news, don't tell me. I'm already six months behind on my bad news. I hate begging for money. Nobody likes it. But they'll come up with it. It only hurts till you give. Hey, that'd make a good poster. Hold the thought. Hold it tight. Somebody might repossess it. <laughs> We're that broke? Oh, broke is looking at it from the bright side. How you doing on the phone, Karen? Just disconnected numbers and pre-recorded threats. <laughs> Adam, mail campaign? Uh, we've mailed out 72 pledge cards. What? We've got almost 20,000 members. Uh, yeah, but we only had 72 stamps. <laughs> there must be some way to raise money. There is. Forget that. We need the money. No, it's embarrassing. After 60, a man has a right not to be embarrassed outside a steamroll. <laughs> Mr. Bush, let me quote from a book by a great American. Successful government is the sum total of each citizen doing his part. Okay, you win. I am that big mouthed great American. Dina, this embarrassing thing Mr. Bush is about to do, is it too embarrassing to tell us about it? It's the Meekdale Bush cocktail party. Another one? <laughs> Sorry. Karen's right. We've had three of those wakes this year. You keep trotting me out like some senile debutante. <laughs> Mr. Bush, you're a very well-known and respected personality. People love to meet you, some of them over and over again. Only people who love to meet people over and over again are politicians in heat. You better autograph some of your books. We can sell them at the party for $5 over retail. We'll make it Thursday night. Karen, will you make the calls? I'll get out my trusty finger. And Adam, you better practice mixing drinks. We can't afford a bartender. Bartender? Wouldn't I be more useful if I demonstrated my expertise in political science? No. Oh, and listen, pass the word. Nobody from Open America drinks anything stronger than ice cubes. We have to save the booze for the paying customers. What do you think, $10 a head? Would you pay $10 to meet me? I met you for nothing. That's what I say, owe me $10. How does this sound? To blank, warmest personal regards, Dale Bush. Very sincere. <laughs> open America is trying to open the lines of communication it's both ways so that the people know what the government's doing and, and more important, so the government knows that the people know and I don't know how to make a daiquiri. <laughs> Mayday, Mayday. What is it, Dina? The man from the liquor store wants cash for the gin. If you don't have $4.36, our guests will be drinking nothing in tonic. All I have is five. You'll get change. I'll need it. I have to eat tonight. Perfect. I know a place that serves a delicious 64-cent dinner. <laughs> Are you hiding? Only my valuables. Thanks for not saying something tacky. My mother told me never to accept straight lines from strangers. Oh, I'm Jess Walker. Karen Angelo. I'm with Open America. Are you with anyone? I'm with the Hopi Indians. But they're not here tonight. <laughs> I, I teach at the reservation school. Oh. I'm here for the White House Conference on Indian Education. Oh, what do you teach? Well, there are only a few thousand Hopis left. I'd like to teach them to survive. Oh, um, have you met Dale Bush? Five times. <laughs> well, maybe you'd like to buy a book. 
Mm, can't afford the book. I brought one of his old ones. Can't afford to take you to dinner either. But I'd like to. Well, I can chip in 64 cents. <laughs> <laughs> well, may I ask you to join me in a very cheap dinner? I'd love to. And you can borrow my copy of the book. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Can I talk to you uh, alone? Uh, Dina, this is Jess Walker. Jess, Dina Madison. How do you do? Oh, nice to see you. Why don't you go meet Dale Bush? <laughs> Dina's our director of rudeness. If I meet Dale Bush once more, we'll be kin. <laughs> What are you doing in here? Circulate. Circulate with him. He's beautiful. Yeah, I just met someone beautiful. That's Kyle Preston. He's more beautiful. Thirty-five million dollars more beautiful. <laughs> Mingle with the money. Make nice. Well, what is that? It's the United States, Janet. You've heard me speak of it. <laughs> Can I uh, explain that for you? Uh, I'm Karen. Angelo. Uh, your name tag. In my business, you uh, notice things like that. Oh, uh, you in the name tag business? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm in the money business. You see, I'm, uh, I'm Kyle Preston. Oh. Well, uh, uh, this is Janet Bartell. Hi, Janet. Janet, this is where you say hello back. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm not sure I uh, exactly know what the money business is. Well, anything that makes money. Corporation here, an empire there. I recycle my own wealth. Mm. Well, uh, have you met Dale Bush? Not for five minutes now. <laughs> Janet, uh, why don't you go call your exchange? Okay. But I hate it when they say I'm not there. <laughs> well... I uh, feel like I should tell you something about open America. Well, for one thing, it serves very weak drinks. <laughs> yes, well, they're as strong as we can afford. We practically have to rent the ice cubes. <laughs> you know, I have some uh, literature and pamphlets you should read. Oh, I, uh, I have people who read for me. But why don't you tell me about it tonight over dinner? I have a feeling that Janet is about to develop a headache. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a date. Uh, nice meeting you, Mr. Preston. Uh, thanks for coming. Well, it can't be anything I've said. I haven't had time to say anything. <laughs> no calls. We're going. Oh, good. Where exactly have we been? <laughs> well? Well, I'm leaving. Everybody's met Dale Bush, and I've met everybody. What about Preston? Oh, we chatted. Did he chat any figures? Well, he didn't talk about donating any money, if that's what you mean. He seemed very interested in you. I uh, think he's a little more interested in himself. <laughs> Are you sure you were nice to him? Oh, I'm sorry. I tend to take poverty very personally. I guess I'm just not very good at soliciting. Karen, in this line of work, we like to call it fundraising. <laughs> Just give me a minute. Huh? Mm -mm. I haven't got a minute. I'm going back to Tucson tomorrow night. I just have to have time to think about it. Us. I'm afraid if I invited you in now, I don't think I could think. Will I see you again? The second date? Mm -hmm. Pick you up in an hour? <laughs> Tomorrow? Lunch? And dinner? It's a set. See, I'm going to be at the White House all morning. 12.30? Larry's restaurant. I think it's a good idea to get too hungry before lunch. Tomorrow. Only for tonight. 
trying so hard to be quiet. I was afraid I'd snap, crackle, or pop at the wrong moment. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> oh. Well, this um, wasn't your run-of-the-mill love at first sight. He is really special. He's a teacher on a Hopi Indian reservation, and he's about this tall, and he's funny and bright and very sensitive, and he's leaving for Arizona tomorrow night. Our daughter's in love. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <sighs> he's here. He who is here? Kyle Preston, Daddy Warbucks Jr. He's here to see you. Why does he want to see me? I think he wants to take you to lunch. Oh, I can't. What happened to that blonde, the one with the big personalities? I couldn't care less what happened to her or them. And why can't you have lunch with him? I have a date with Jess. Jess? The bumpkin? He is not a bumpkin, and I want to have lunch with him. Can he give you $2,700? What does that mean? That is how much we need to make it through the rest of the month. And that very attractive, gorgeous, yet with it all, rich man can give it to us. Dana, this lunch with Jess is very important to me. I thought all this was very important to you. You know it is. It's not like I'm asking you to take a jacuzzi with him. It's one lousy little lunch. I really hate you a lot. Uh, I have to make a call. Uh, why don't you get us a table? Okay, but don't dawdle. Okay. Miss Deuce. Hi, Aaron. That's uh, him? I expected uh, Robert Redford, uh, maybe even Pope John. He's not either of them. May I use your telephone? Who do you want? Well, Larry's restaurant on Connecticut Avenue. I'll get it for you. Hey, uh, you okay? Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, is there a Jess Walker at the bar, please? Thank you. Ernie, do you ever hate yourself? If I can't get someone else to do it. Oh, Jess, Karen, I hate to do this, but something's come up. Oh, no, no, it has to do with open America. Uh, you know that man I was talking to last night? Well, he has money. A lot of it. And we need a lot of it. Oh, no, 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 dinner for sure. Look, Jess, it's just that we really need... <laughs> okay. Bye. Congratulations. You just turned pro. <laughs> of open America is that every American should know exactly where their representatives stand on the issues, how they vote behind closed doors, and who pays their campaign expenses. Oh, I'm sorry. I've talked all the way through your steak sandwich. Hey, no hassle. I said I wanted to learn about open America, and I did. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, kind of new at this. I think this is where I'm supposed to ask you for the money. <laughs> Have some money, please. <laughs> the money for open America. How much would you like? Well, does twenty-seven hundred dollars sound fair? Silly? Reasonable? Possible? Hmm? At least three out of four. Excuse me, Karen. Check Eisenberg for about $2,700 for Open America. My accountant's in here. Cute little guy. I'll have an answer for you tonight. Honest? Yeah, we can uh, talk about it over dinner. Dinner? Oh, I can't dinner tonight. Oh, well, whenever you're free. Well, uh, look, I'd, I'd really like to. Uh, how about tomorrow night? Well, tomorrow night I'm attending a big banquet on starvation. <laughs> tonight would be better. 
Uh, check, please. Well, look, uh, if you change your mind, uh, I'm at the Madison. Uh, be sure and call first. <clears throat> the coffee machine and we'll have the money soon you said that last week want to fool around big guy move it lady i'm late already hold it relax the cavalry just arrived show them the money i didn't get it don't move or i'll copy your face <laughs> what do you mean you didn't get it well we will get it i think but later what time? How late later? Well, he wanted to have dinner tonight, but... Why can't you? I'm seeing Jess. She's seeing Jess. Dina, I just met somebody I might really care about. You know how that is. I think I remember. Karen. Dina, I'm having dinner with Jess. Okay, take it away. I wouldn't fool around with you if you repossessed the last copy machine on Earth. I have some speaking engagements coming up, haven't I? They ought to bring a few bucks. Sure, if you can get to them. You may have to walk. There must be some airline we don't know. Air India. Feel like speaking in Calcutta? <laughs> Dina has a way of making the most hopeless situation sound impossible. And then we have the checks. Checks. <laughs> Dina, you mumbled something about checks. Um, I'm afraid I was a little optimistic. I figured we'd do better with the cocktail party. We only cleared a fast 150 bucks. And I was sure that Karen would get a donation out of Kyle Preston, so I wrote some checks. Wrote some checks? How much? 600 more than we have in the bank. <laughs> you will come see me on visiting days. <laughs> yes, the number of the Madison Hotel, please. Care for another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I'm uh, just fine. A beautiful view. Thank you. Karen, guess what? I've saved this seat especially for you. Uh, Mr. Preston. Uh, Kyle. Only my parents call me Mr. Preston. <laughs> Kyle. I'm sure you still have a lot of questions about open America. And I am a little pressed for time, and you did say we were going to go out for dinner. Well, we don't have to go out for dinner. I mean, they have excellent room service here. That's why I bought the hotel. <laughs> yes, but uh, you did say we would go out to dinner. And I do think a restaurant would be much more conducive. Well, I thought we might conduce right here. Uh, you don't like the suite? Oh, yes, it's really... Expensive suite. 300 big ones a day. 300? <laughs> this room makes more money than most people. Oh, it's not just this room. Uh, would you like to see the rest of it? Or should we wait till after room service? Uh, just why do you think I'm here? For the purpose of thanking me, I would assume. For what? for my unselfish, unanonymous, generous contribution to open America. Three thousand dollars? Oh, well, I, 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 I don't know how to thank you. Think hard. <laughs> oh, come on, honey. We're both grown-ups here. I'm sure a beautiful grown-up like you could think of a rather clever way to say thank you to a beautiful grown-up like me. We really need this money. Mm-hmm. But I gave up an awful lot just to be here tonight. And I can't give any more than that. Well, Karen, 
Yes. Uh, and don't confuse that with yes. Here, take the check. I was going to give it to you anyway. I just wanted to test how grateful you might be. No strings? No strings. It's business. I do business with everyone. Republicans, Democrats, every cause, every religion. I'm even having a disease named after me. So why not open America? Then, thank you. Uh, just one thing, Karen. Uh, do me a favor. Don't call me more than once a year. Striking out is not tax deductible. <laughs> now get going so I can get another dinner date before room service gets here. Yes, Ken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your hotel and they said you switched to an earlier flight. I got you three messages canceling dinner. I couldn't reach you. Very busy at the White House. Painting wind buttons. Did you get the money? Doesn't seem important now. Well, give it to the Indians. We need protection from the good guys. Jess, take a later plane. I better not. Why? Priorities. I guess. You're so wound up in open America. You're so involved in behalf of the people. All us round the clock do gooders are on that risk. Take care. Washington is full of clever people like you. How you doing? Okay. You know how grateful we all are for what you did. And I know how it hurts. About the fella, I mean. He had a tough decision to make, and... Well, for what it's worth, I think you made the right one. I hope so. Karen, back in the Stone Age, when I was just out of college, there were two men in love with me. Now, I know. Hard to believe, but it happened. One man was rich and the other was poor. And I had to choose between them. I chose the poor man. Dina. You chose the poor man. Then what happened? He borrowed $200 from me and I never saw him again. <laughs> Thank you. 